Thanks for joining me here on Tropical Weather Impact. It is 10 a.m. here on your July the 17th here from New Orleans. We are tracking our invest, our area of disturbed weather that will be moving across southeast Louisiana as we go through the next couple of days or so. And we do expect some passing showers here and all, uh, here and there over the next couple of days. But so far, things have been fairly uneventful across New Orleans. We do have a shower that's been building across the city so far, and we do expect a couple of more showers to build on through as we go through the remainder of uh, at least Thursday and Friday. Now here's where we stand right now. The area of disturbed weather invest 93. It is still unorganized. We do have a low pressure. That's a given, but so far it hasn't met the criteria to become a depression. And so that's why the thing remains just as a unorganized area of showers and thunderstorms. Nonetheless, doesn't change the impacts, does it? And so this is going to be drifting right into the heart of southeast Louisiana. But notice where all the rain is. The rain is on the southern side of this system and down along the coast. And so far, that's where the heaviest of the rain has has remained. So as it stands of 10 a.m. this morning, the flood threat is at least elevated down here where the rain actually is. Now in New Orleans and the North Shore, North Shore doesn't have a thing going on right now, but the South Shore, we've had a couple isolated showers popping up. The widespread rain though has remained south of the city. And as we go through today, I do think this corridor in here, let's say from Lafayette, Baton Rouge, down the bayou to the coast, this is the corridor where the flood threat is higher where they are already seeing rain and they've been dealing with rain throughout much of uh, the earlier morning hours. So you can see the spin there and then notice you even have some sunshine on the North Shore this morning here. So the North Shore probably staying dry for the remainder of the morning here. You may see some rain this afternoon, but I'm not sure you're going to get a whole lot from this if you live north of Lake Pontchartrain. South of Lake Pontchartrain in the immediate metro, marginal risk for flooding, a better chance of flooding the further down into the bayou and over towards the Atchafalaya. Uh, you get so far though you can see a closer look at radar some of these heavier showers analyzing heavy rain from Baton Rouge to Lafayette down through um, the Atchafalaya and into Morgan City we've got heavy rain heavy rain Thibodeau to Homa even a lot of lightning and thunder in these and then closer look that little shower that's popped up here in New Orleans so if you are watching us in New Orleans this morning uh, you're probably hearing some lightning and thunder as this little tropical downpour passes on through. Luckily it is moving and so the flood risk with this is not going to be a problem at least with this specific shower. But uh, you know if we get more and more of these or they become more widespread you may have some flooding. But I really think this is what we're going to be watching today are these passing showers drifting through the region here. A lot of them are not going to cause us any problems but every now and then you get one that acts up and maybe lingers a little too long. And so in New Orleans right now a quick shower passing uptown French Quarter CBD the West Bank. It's all drifting east about 10 miles an hour or so, so it does have at least some movement to it. Now, when you look at the rainfall rates in some of these, uh, every now and then they do tick on up. Most of these are going to be anywhere from one to three to two to four inches an hour. This is an example of a very heavy shower where you're approaching that four inch an hour mark for parts of the West Bank and over the quarter. Now, again, these are moving, but if that shower lingers for 15 minutes and you're picking up four inches in an hour, you can get up to a couple of inches of rain if it's lingers just long enough. And so that's our main concern with all of these showers will be just how much they linger. Now, if you're watching us down in the bayou or the river parishes, it's been much more active down there. We have a couple street flood advisories this morning. That includes areas around Thibodeau, Shriver, Gray, Homa, all the way down from Homa, Chauvin, Montague, into the down the bayou area down there in Terrebonne. You do have some heavier showers that continue. And when you look at how much rain you've picked up over the past three hours, you can see why you do have these street flood advisories. So far, the hot spot in the big winter has been in Terrebonne Parish around Homa over the past three hours. I am clocking right at two and a half to three inches of rain. A little further down into Montague and down into the marshy areas, I'm clocking over four to five inches of rain, and that's only fallen in the past three hours. So this is a great example on what we're going to be watching here the next two days are you get these little instances that is impossible to forecast where that could happen, but it could happen anywhere where you get that four, five, six inches of rain. And uh, of course, that happens in an urban area where drainage is a problem. Then you get street flooding. Also, a hot spot has been up around Baton Rouge and uh, over towards Assumption and um, Ascension Parish and south of Baton Rouge. We picked up a couple of inches of rain here. I don't think it's causing any big problems, but you can see that's going to be a bullseye as well. And again, this is over the past three hours. Now, if you got rain last night, here's what things have looked like since yesterday. You can see most of us have picked up at least an inch south of the lake. Most of the North Shore hasn't picked up much at all. But down here in the bayou, you can see there this corridor from Homa, Thibodeau, and up into 
uh, Assumption Parish, you've picked up over four inches of rain over the past 24 hours. So we were talking about yesterday, we're forecasting widespread two to four inches, isolated six to eight inches, and some of you have already picked up four. So that's why that six to eight inches is certainly reasonable, especially in those Bayou Parishes where that flood risk does look to be elevated. Let's walk you through our high resolution modeling here. This is just hot off the press here as of this morning's run, and you can see it's doing a pretty good job. I'm impressed with how this has handled it so far. So it's got a little bit of trust in it. Now, I always like to remind you, models are always wrong, but they give us an idea and some are better than others when it comes to events. Here we are Thursday afternoon. A couple showers near New Orleans and North Shore. That's fairly uneventful though for the New Orleans Metro. So notice where the heavy rain persists down in the bayou, up the Atchafalaya Basin, that corridor I've been talking about. I think that's where the flood risk is gonna be higher through the rest of the morning and into the early afternoon. Now, as we get you into the later afternoon, four and five o'clock, you've got heavier rain starting to spread further inland. Notice perhaps in New Orleans and the North Shore, we're still just getting passing showers. This is why I'm not tremendously stressed about this system across the New Orleans Metro. Now we'll watch it to make sure nothing changes, but really this corridor in here, maybe into central Louisiana, you've got a higher risk for flooding later on this afternoon. Fast forward into tonight and tomorrow morning. I do think we'll see another resurgent of higher rain or heavier rain along the Louisiana coast. Right now, this model seems to be honing in on the western parts of the state, but I think it's reasonable to think some of these heavy showers could extend into parts of Lower Terrebonne and Lafourche Friday morning. So fast forwarding it, the Invest 93 is already in central Louisiana. At that point, it's just still a weak low pressure, but it's got all that tropical moisture with it. Watch as we fast forward into Friday afternoon. We've got scattered showers popping up as we often do in the summer months. Thing is, we still have deep tropical moisture, and so these showers, they can produce a quick couple of inches of rain. But tomorrow, still not a complete washout. I think they're dry hours on Friday too, so that's why I've been telling everyone, don't cancel your plans. If you're watching me outside of New Orleans, you have travel plans here. Come on down, literally, because we are going to be just fine. Uh, I think at the end of the day, this may have a couple heavy showers here and there, but there's no reason to cancel any travel plans this direction. Uh, and that goes for the entire Gulf Coast, especially over to the Florida Panhandle. There is no reason to cancel travel plans here. By this weekend, we're back to our normal summer weather. Saturday's probably going to be a bit active, too. I think the chance of rain on Saturday is going to be elevated. And we still have enough tropical moisture and maybe not enough movement in the atmosphere that we could have some isolated street flooding just like we do any time in the summer months. So again, we'll just have to watch that as we go throughout Saturday. And then Sunday, uh, we start seeing a less and less rain because a ridge of high pressure builds in. So again, our rainfall totals widespread two to four inches, especially south and west of the city. This corridor here is where I think there's a much higher chance of getting some bigger rain totals, even more than what the models are showing. The experts over at the Weather Prediction Center are on the same page as this, and they think that that corridor from Lafayette down the Atchafalaya over into parts of the Bayou Parishes, I could see this red extending closer maybe to Baton Rouge and down through Thibodeau and Houma. I think that's the corridor with the highest flooding threat today and the coastal areas, but again, coastal areas it immediately drains off into the Gulf here. New Orleans, North Shore, Mississippi, flood risk is much more isolated, which is why we've got a level two out of four there in the yellow. For your Friday, similar setup here. I think the flood risk is probably higher maybe in coastal regions and to the west of New Orleans, but we still will have some bands streaming through, so there's that isolated risk for street flooding even in the New Orleans area. This is not a strong system. How do we know that? Well, the winds are not howling. Now, we have seen an increase in winds here, and you can see somewhat of a, na I don't want to call it nasty, a broad structure. Uh, a messy structure is the word I'm looking for here. Our invest of uh, low pressure, somewhat unorganized. You can see some spin in the atmosphere, winds gusting 20, not a big deal. But every now and then you may see a wind gust here and there over 40 miles an hour. Winds are never expected to become anything too dangerous or problematic, but some breezes coming on through over the next couple of days as that low passes through. Let's talk about what Invest 93 might do next week because it may not be done with us. It may come back and visit us again. It's, I always joke and say it's that unwanted guest that you're excited to leave and then they come back only a week later and you think, oh my gosh. And so here we go. This is Invest 93. It's sitting over South Louisiana now with the extra tropical moisture. It's gonna lift north. Why is it lifting north? You've got a ridge of high pressure in the mid to upper levels. It's gonna ride around that. That's the steering currents of the atmosphere. It's gonna ride around the ridge. Some of that moisture gets pulled back down 
And yeah, it looks like a repeat of what we just are dealing with right now. And so while it's impossible to say exactly how this plays out, it could look a little different. Obviously, we will probably have more disturbed weather rolling through Florida by next Tuesday. And then by Wednesday and Thursday, we're doing it all over again like Groundhog Day, more tropical moisture building in. Uh, development chances of this, I would say, are rather marginal, just like what we're dealing with now. But you know how these things go. It's hurricane season. We track areas of disturbed weather over the Gulf. But if it stays close enough to the, to the land like this past one did, 93, we may not have much development, but still a risk for some heavier tropical showers. Again, too early to say for sure if it looks exactly the same. It's just something we've noticed in the pattern on why that moisture would get pulled around that ridge of high pressure. And so this is an interesting um, uh, look at the atmosphere at multiple levels. The red levels are going to be closer to the surface. Let's say five, 10,000 feet up. The wind barbs you see here are 30, 40,000 feet up in the atmosphere, much higher. And you can see there, anytime you have clockwise flow, clockwise, clockwise flow, that's a hard thing to say, in the northern hemisphere is high pressure or a ridge of high pressure. And so we're going to watch that moisture travel around it, back down and over us as we head into next week. So that's why we've got that system potentially traveling, uh, at least the leftover moisture from it traveling back our direction. So as it stands right now, as we look at our Thursday forecast track and invest 93, we don't think we're getting Dexter out of this. We probably don't even get a depression. Great news there. You never want a name storm to deal with. And either way, this is just going to be a rainmaker, whether it has had a name or not. But we are still looking at Dexter as our next name on the list and Aaron. And um, you can see there we've checked off three so far. Andrea, Barry and Chantal as hurricane season 2025 rolls on. We are going to have updates every single hour right here on WWL Plus and also all of our other uh, streaming services on YouTube. Don't forget our website WWLTV.com or all of our personal social media pages. We keep updated for you, but we will see you right here on the top of every hour as we track Invest 93 as it moves through Louisiana. Thank you so much for joining me.